Okay, so today, what's the title? Something to do with the date with the Guru Rinpoche, I was told. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I hope um, some of you who um, are here and not here for, I don't know, assumptions. <laughs> anyway, Guru Rinpoche. Now, Guru Rinpoche, to begin with, I have to say Guru Rinpoche is a really special phenomena. It's a really special phenomena. Um, I'll tell you a few things. I have met so many people, you know, like um, totally non-Buddhist, totally not Buddhist, like um, English, Australian. I know those who have no clue about Buddhism, nothing. Hippies, you know, like those. <laughs> and they will, even these people who have no clue about Buddhism, they, they feel, they, they, they say, oh, I like Guru Rinpoche. And I ask them, why? Why do you like Guru Rinpoche? They sort of shrug and they say, I don't know. <laughs> the guy appeals to me. Yeah, it is quite a strange phenomenon. They seem to like Guru Rinpoche. I don't know. I mean, one would think, you know, there are people who actually prefer Guru Rinpoche. I mean, I dare not say this. Then, <laughs> then I think Shakti Muni Buddha is like, you are, you are this, you know, classic savior. You know, bare feet, begging ball, this serene, San, San Francisco of Assisi kind of look. You understand, very sort of austere, very, you know, like, you know, those are the people who you would, you know, morally, ethically, you would be inspired. Guru Rinpoche, on the other hand, is wearing these strange hats. And he's, even his prayer says he has all these ladies following him. And he wears all kinds of strange outfit. He has beard. He has, not that I'm against beard, <laughs> moustache, all that. But somehow they seem to prefer Guru Rinpoche. This is interesting, really interesting. And then, when once when I was in Sri Lanka, now this is really so in interesting for me. Sri Lanka is a Theravadan dominated, you know, Buddhist country. So definitely there is no Vajrayana uh, information. And of course, Guru Rinpoche is so associated with, I mean, Guru Rinpoche is Tantra sort of personified, isn't it? So, but when I was in Sri Lanka, and I wasn't even actually there for some spiritual reason, I was there making film. And at that time, a monk, a Theravadan monk, came to see me, because he heard there's a Tibetan Lama hanging around in Sri Lanka. So he, he came to, he said he, he needed to see me. So I was feeling a little bit like awkward. Why would he want to see me? So anyway, we made an appointment and he came. And then the whole reason why he came to see me was because 
he said ever since he was young he dream of guru rinpoche and he said he really likes guru rinpoche okay this is very interesting for me now those who are those who don't know so much about the sort of geographical situation of buddhism for you maybe this is not interesting but you know it's it's a really in, you know for if you know that this context it's really really special and i believe tomorrow i'm going to a place where supposedly it's a theravadan seat but then i heard they have a guru rinpoche statue now this is really intriguing again so guru rinpoche see among many other things guru rinpoche is also really how can you it fit in your head his lotus bone who would like lotus bone it's like it's like scientifically not possible you know what i mean oh shakti muni buddha prince siddhartha who got tired with, who was revolted towards his you know like this uh, you know worldly life he renounced all oh, this story is nice it's very convincing but guru rinpoche lotus born and then you know he and then he never dies now this is even <laughs> more strange for you for most of you who are already sort of um, guru rinpoche fanatic for you of course it's not nothing special but you know for a lot of people this is not that easy to chew this is not that easy. yeah me personally i was born and raised in a totally guru rinpoche sort of oriented people my father was like that you know, the, all he thinks about is guru rinpoche my grandfather my mother my mother's father and mother the prayer flags the statues probably in our home there must be at least a hundred guru rinpoche statues small big and we grow up looking at you know uh, prostrating towards guru rinpoche's footprint and we go grow up with a uh, you know surrounded by stories like guru rinpoche came to this and that place riding a tiger skeptics will not understand these things they say that the bodhisattvas they do prayers they do aspirations they have aspirations and for instance like avalokiteshvara supposedly he uh, blessed his identity so that he will be known more than any other bodhisattvas which is kind of true avalokiteshvara is sort of you could almost say the most favorite of course in tibet there's a so much avalokiteshvara going on india avalokiteshvara at times maybe avalokiteshvara may come in the form as another different form which is again something quite interesting because see, the moment you cross border you know like india border to china the avalokiteshvara changes its gender and the avalokiteshvara becomes a woman but nevertheless avalokiteshvara is known so much so much this is because when he was in the early stage of bodhisattva path they say that he did so much aspiration that his identity alone will bless and in sort of inspire people beings sit yeah and then like aryatara that uh, the pujas i mean the prayers we did she did a prayer that she will never ever become male 
that only in the with the form of a woman, female, she will uh, benefit sentient beings. So each different bodhisattvas they have different aspirations. So it's believed that Guru Rinpoche, when he was a bodhisattva, in the early stage of the bodhisattva uh, path, Guru Rinpoche did prayers that he would benefit those. Um, but, yeah, those who are so stuck with rationalism. <laughs> you understand? Those who think logically. He blessed himself. He will come and destroy this logic, rationalism. And those who are difficult to be tamed, you know, dulvarkavi, dulka, meaning difficult to tame beings, difficult to tame meaning those who only believe in logic. One of them, the most important one. I cannot say that his teachings are irrational, definitely not. But it is not limited to rational and logical. It's beyond that also. Not saying that it's, it doesn't, you know, it's, uh, it's irrational. It's not like, you know, um, it's not, not at all a gibberish sort of hodgepodge of, you know, some sort of a, um, I don't know, um, it, it has all the reasoning and logic if you like but it is always it is always a path that goes beyond i mean even guru rinpoche's manifestation sometimes he appears as a shakti senge you know serene tamed gentle smiling, begging bowl, all that. Other times, he is chol, we call it chol, it's like gone, um, not, uh, not uh, what do you call it, uh, not constrict, basically, not really gone wild, I would not say gone wild, but not constricted, not, not bowing down to the norm. So then we have Guru Rinpoche riding on tiger. Other times Guru Rinpoche appears as a king. Pema Jebo, we call him. The lot you know, the Pema Jebo, the king of the lotus. <coughs> um, And even his teachings, yes, there are teachings that are sort of the, you know, stand, our, you know, your standard sort of step-by-step -step teachings. There's a lot of that, a lot of that. Even the way it is taught, you know, the master to, uh, the teacher to the student and the lineage, all of that. Mm -hmm the view, meditation, action, the ground, the fruit, the path, all that. But many times his teachings also comes in a very, in a very different form, uh, such as the treasure teaching. Like uh, we call it um, that chu, which is a treasure teaching. It's, It's again mind-boggling. It's it's not necessarily composed. It's not really like someone, you know, sort of thought about it and then wrote these teachings. It just uh, for those who are totally those who are so immersed with the Guru Rinpoche, such as the Chogju Lingpa or Jamgun Gongdo Lodo Thai, Jingme Lingpa, Longchenpa, because they are so, so immersed or basically in union with the Guru Rinpoche at all times. And when the sentient beings have a good, um, 
merit, I mean enough merit, many times the teachings just appears as a treasure teaching. I have a, this story came to my mind, so I have to tell you this. And it comes also when the right cause and conditions are all there. It just comes. Such as, um, I know Jimmy Chinsir, which is, I mean, how high is it here, from here? One hour. Um, he may not like me telling you this, but <laughs> anyway, my master, he was in Paris and he was just leaving Paris. And as he was leaving Paris, at the airport, Jimmy Chinsir Rinpoche's sister offered him a notebook, empty notebook, just to make notes. And somehow that ended up becoming an auspicious cause and condition. And of course, Jabji Tengu Chinsir Rinpoche himself is a Guru Rinpoche. None other than the Guru Rinpoche. So he boarded the pl plane and he was flying from Paris to New Delhi. Non-stop. It just came. The, the teaching of the Guru um, Surya Rashmi. Guru Nima Yuzar, the One of the manifestations of Guru Rinpoche. It just came. Gushing out. Not composed, you know, I've actually seen the original text, not even one sort of, you know, like crossed or edited or added, nothing, just gushed out. It's incredible, you know, that these things happen. After Kempo asked me to talk about Guru Rinpoche, I was going to um, give you the transmission of um, Guru Rinpoche ki tenche. It's actually a treasure discovery of Jamyang Chenche Wangpo, the first Jamyang Chenche. He wrote a very, very, he, I should not say wrote, that, you know, again, he came up with this treasure teaching, treasure, treasure sadhana to accomplish the Guru Rinpoche. Um, I think it was requested by the first Chokju Lingpa. The first Chokju Lingpa requested him to come up with something very compact and short. So that's the transmission. This is something that I do it every day. So uh, that's the transmission I'm going to give you. I was going to give you. <clears throat> so anyway, yes, Guru Rinpoche. Just where can what can I say? There's just too much things. And by the way, for those who cannot understand things without the logic, without a normal, you know, you know, way of thinking, there is also Guru Rinpoche's life story. That is actually like he had a parent and he was born. You know the usual story. You have. If you want, if you prefer that kind of more like a uh, that kind of version, yeah, there is that too. And then, if you read the, the supplication, such as the seven nine prayer, Chidun Sondep. Yes, at glance, it looks like. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's not that, you know, difficult to comprehend at glance. But, you know, as you go deeper, this seven nine prayer is not that easy. It's really profound. Nifam Rinpoche actually has a whole commentary on that. Um, maybe um, those who wish to really go you know, deeper into the Guru Rinpoche world, you should consider reading that. I think this is actually translated by Pemakara translation. Uh, anyway, most is symbolically 
in the most outer sort of form or outer way of explaining Guru Rinpoche. We all know that he was adopted by King Indrabhuti. When King, King Indrabhuti found him in Danakosha Lake, which, by the way, many people think, some people think it's in Pakistan. Can you see? Even this is fascinating. You understand? It's in Pakistan, not in Lumbini, you know? Not in, you know, some... It's in Pakistan. Can you think about it? It's like the most volatile place. It's just incredible that, you know, he has to do this. Um, there are some scholars who may dispute this, but anyway. And outerly, Gujarimpache, yes, he was adopted by King Indraputi, he got sort of fed up with the palace life, he renounced the palace life, and then he studied under many great uh, masters, uh, more on the outer uh, version, you know, he studied under the uh, great, you know, Ananda, so on and so forth. Mm. And then, you know, the Guru Rinpoche's life story also has many different angles. Um, innerly, he, he was studying under the great uh, Vidya Daras, like a Shri Simha, like a Vimala Mitra. Uh, you know, out, outwardly, the uh, the Buddhists would brag about um, institute or the universities such as Nalanda or the Brikamalashila Brikamal universities, you know, those, those. But when it really matters, the most special teachings, those were not really found from the Nalanda university. This is what, especially the Nyingmapas, these guys, they will say this. They were found in many cemeteries actually sort of the core of the highest teachings, the tantric teachings are found in the cemeteries and some prostitute house also, some bar, you know, like Changkang, we call it, you know, like wine house, you know, into, you know, this, this is, there's are incredible stories. And if you look at it, look into many of the tantric teachings such as Vajrakilaya Tantra. Um, Guru Rinpoche studied in this in studied or he got it in the uh, somewhat somewhat near uh, Bodhigaya. There's a um, cemetery called Tuchu Sibitsal. And um, and not just Vajrakilaya, Hayagriva, Tantra, Malhotra Tantra. Yeah, so the story is, um, you know, it's, it's very, you know, like outer, inner, and the secret stories. They are all kind of intertwined. It's really intertwined and deliberately made into something so mythical and magical also. This is a deliberate. It's almost like they will, some of these stories are made into something almost like mind-boggling so that people who love reasoning and logic, they will just go before they turn the 10th page. Uh, these kind of stories will kick them out. When they go out, the real tantric masters, they are very happy. This is it. This is what we want. You know, like stories like... But, but you see, the thing is, these stories can be also very inspiring. Um, one such thing which just came in my mind is like... Uh, you know, Bauda Stupa, Bauda Nath Stupa was built by um, this old lady who had three children. 
end of the stupa, you know, con I mean, construction. You know, mother died, and the three children, three sons, you know, they continued. And um, this is really interesting story. Mm. Anyway, uh, the oldest son, he did prayer that due to this merit, may I become a king or something like this, he, who later become king to some of the Anyway, as he was doing the prayers, a mosquito beat him. And he sort of slept on the mosquito and the mosquito died. And this mosquito became Lacham Pemasal, the daughter of King Tisong Dilchen. Yes. And uh, the, the princess Pemasal basically died prim almost like a really, really young time. Tisong Dilchen was so sad and went straight to Guru Rinpoche and saying, you know, my beloved daughter died. Guru Rinpoche summoned Lachim Pemasal from the Bardo state and then gave the whole Shitra Naradongdu, which is the, you know, the very famous, most revered teachings of the Bardo, you know, like um, uh, peaceful and hundred peaceful and wrathful deities teachings was given for that Pemasal. Who, by the way, later, later, you know, after a few lifetimes, became Longchenpa. Longchenpa used to be a mosquito. Can you this? <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? So, in all these, there is these stories. Yes, you can always dismiss them as a myth, fable, when you dismiss this as a fable, <sighs> the Agazati is so happy. <laughs> so we managed to, what do you call it, strain, strain, strain them out. But if you want to go, if you are stubborn, you say, no, 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 wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer of this. If you go, then there's another layer of fascinating stories. Such as, you know, Terda Lingpa. Terda Lingpa is one of the great followers of Guru Rinpoche. Incredible. It's like the only thing he can think about is Guru Rinpoche. And in the, you know, Terda Lingpa, in one of his whatever dream or vision or whatever you want to call it, he, he saw a, this beautiful palace and... Um, supposedly copper-colored mountain. And um, they were just beginning to have a feast, party, and Tazalim, of course, not, miss, not wanting to miss the party. You know, just show, you know, like, crush the party. You know, like, he just forced himself in. And there's a Guru Rinpoche. And, um, with all the other Vidyadharas, they are all are eating fruits, drinking wine, and all the, you know, you know, the dancers dancing, musicians playing music, etc., etc. Then, of course, Dada Lingba enjoying thoroughly, but as Dada Lingba is enjoying thoroughly, he could notice a wall. And somehow he felt that there's something inside this wall. He just felt it. He just can't stop. He can feel that there's something going inside. So he wanted to go in. And he was trying to find a way. But there's no door. I'm making this story short, by the way. It's a really long story. <laughs> he, he wanted to go in, but there's no door. Because, you know, what happened was before he entered the, you know, Guru Rinpoche palace, he was, you know, when he was crushing the gate, there was, you know, Hayagriva and Vajrapani at the, as a, you, what do you call it? Uh, bouncer. I said, who are you? You know, like, who do you think you are? You are not invited here. But he said, no, I'm like, you know, I've lived for this guy called Guru Rinpoche. So I, if I'm not entitled, who is? So anyway, he managed to convince these bouncers. 
But now, inside he has a problem. There's no bouncer, there's no door. But he can hear music going on inside. He can feel it. So he was going round and round this wall, this round wall. So he had to ask somebody, I really want to go in this. How do I do this? There's nobody stopping me, but I can't go in. Anyway, anyway one of the people said, well, for that, to go in there, you need to have a ticket. It's called non, no inhibition ticket. You have to shrug off all your inhibition and lack of confidence and wholeheartedly jump for it, you know, like. So then, but the moment he thought about, you know, his own inhibition and, you know, all of that, somehow he found himself inside. The inner, the real party was going on inside. And who was the sort of the guest of honor, the inside? It's Vajrayogini. Is this is like the more sort of what you call it higher class sort of party going on inside, <laughs> and nobody is wearing anything. Everybody is naked, <laughs> and there is no fruits and wine and water. And this sort of you know, this sort of low class food. <laughs> it's all like blood, <laughs> bones, and flesh of his own. Also, so you can see that this is what you hear if you are following Guru Rinpoche and his sort of world. Um, so, I don't know, I'm telling you these things just so that you sort of prepare. I think most of you are sort of the um, kind of, I can see many of you are quite... Either you are already too late to get uh, to <laughs> to be to quit from Guru Rinpoche world. I need to tell you this. This is so. I really like this one. This piece written by Mibham Rinpoche about Guru Rinpoche. Okay. I don't. I don't think I can untranslate this well, but I will try very roughly, but someone should do this. This is a, such a beautiful, it actually gives me goosebumps every time I read this. Okay, first in Tibetan, he says this, Riksum jawa dubi ngoyi lama tsen sam tembe jinlap chatin tari yowa bhela kadin tsumi rikzinji lopen choji doji shape ndujungi norbu chiwi tsuktu gombi kazang di thopa lakal chepi deme ngajigla samna Miham Rinpoche has many, many songs. And there's a two songs you should, uh, those who are seriously studying, you should really look up. There's a two songs. One is he called it, he, under the title of um, Songs of Happiness. And the other is Songs of Sorrow. This comes in the section of songs, stanzas of how he's happy, how is he happy because of this and that, you know. So, this is what he says. To be, okay, to have this, this opportunity, to, to, to even have this idea occurring in my mind that I will think of Guru Rinpoche above my head, who is actually none other than uh, the quintessence of the three roots, embodiment of all the Buddhas, just remembering his name will uh, shower blessing. Especially he had a uh, attend uh, um, special sort of uh, we, we have we are all uh, specially um, how should I say um, we have a place specially in his heart um, when I look at other people who have no merit to have anything 
or ab above their head. When I look at people who have no, not even a curiosity, not even a wish, of course no wish, not even a curiosity to think of anyone above their head. Um, at least I have this wish to put him above my head. And when I think about this, I am so happy that I have devotion towards this person who you know first of all is really really it, it takes so much merit to have a devotion just to have a devotion is difficult secondly it is even more difficult to have a correct being to have the devotion so Mifam Rinpoche is saying, I'm just so happy today to have a devotion to the person who really is the worthy of a devotion. So when I think about this, I'm so happy. So this is one of his songs. I really like this one. Um, I'm not, of course, I'm not doing justice in translating. This is so good. Um, he, the, another, um, in the, another song, he says this. Um, Mahanguru, Lotin Chosi Jingo, Chabdan Jambal Doji Dangi Dushubo, Yishi Teb, Sunday Mingshi Jijan, Bobby Tessin Jiji go for the Chel, JB Minzun Sanji Kavani Metsu, Dungen Tabi, Nima Doani, Lunchi, Raman Sabdin Toba Katsu Dudu, and Median Resum in a Chiboran Dugo. I will just condense. He's saying that I cannot understand why people think that Dhamma practice is so difficult. You know, just you know, to have a devotion towards Guru Rinpoche is easier than blinking your eyes. Blinking your eyes takes a bit of an effort. So to have Guru Rinpoche, to have devotion towards Guru Rinpoche, so no, no effort at all. And within that period of even more easier than blinking your eyes, just the thought of Guru Rinpoche, you are bypassing all the yanas, all the vehicles, all the, you know, uh, efforts that you think you have to do. Really, as I said, to hear about Guru Rinpoche, you need to have a different ear. You really need a different kinds of yeah, you need to have a different attitude. You have to, I don't know, you have to sort of, you have to become, I think, like two years old. At the same time, you also have to be 90 years old and 30 years old. Everything mixed, you understand? You have to be totally illiterate. You have to be an idiot, but at the same time, you have to be a scholar. It's like you have to be mix all this. Until then, if you don't have that, if you are one of those rational freak, I'm sorry, Guru Rinpoche is not going to enter in your head, I don't know, heart and head, it's, it's, it's like this, what to do? When Guru Rinpoche was um, about to depart to, um, you know, uh, Copper colored mountain. The Tisong Dilchen's son was just so sad. He said, How can you leave me behind? My father died. The Chanta Rakshitas have left. Vimala Mitras went to China. And Namkin went to, you know, the south of Tibet. And you, now you are leaving me. And he fainted. He fainted. And Guru Rinpoche poured water over him and woke him up and said, No, you don't think that. I am going to leave you my, uh, what do you call it? The, I'm going to leave my mind and my speech and my body with you. So beyond body, speech and mind, that's all him, isn't it? So, of course, the prince was so excited and, you know, like, 
the first the mind, you know. Just think of me and I'm there already. That's all you need. The moment you think of me, I'm there. That's, your, that's, my, that's my representation of my mind. Read all the treasure teachings. That's the sp the, my representation of the speech. Now, for the body, you see, it's like the conquest. He grabbed a handful of dust and gave it to Lhasi Munizambu and said, this is me, my body. And this became sort of the, um, how to say, the beginning of what we call Guru Kutsap. Kutsap is like a, the representation of the Guru Rinpoche. There's a, so many, so many interval. There's one called, there's one in Yalung Shelda, which is one of my favorite, which has a, this really gazing eyes. Yerlung Shelda. You, you can download the photo, it's so beautiful. It's supposedly, yeah, that's one of the Kutsap. And you know what happened when the Shakya Shiri went with his disciples and his friends, he told his disciples and friends, pointing at the Yerlung Shelda Guru Kutsap, he's saying, guys, this is not a statue. Not a stone, not a, you know, nothing. This is Guru Rinpoche. You guys, you, this is your opportunity, time, to pledge something, to do something good in your life. I don't know, be it like, I will quit, I don't know, smoke every Wednesday or something like this. You understand, it doesn't matter, whatever, you know, like, I will chant this much mantra, I will do this retreat, that practice. Shakti Shiri himself, he said, he took out his mala, his rosary, and he, he, he hold, held it tightly and he told his disciples, myself, in the presence of Guru Rinpoche, I'm going to pledge that I'm not going to do any prayers from today onwards. And he threw the mala towards Guru Rinpoche's statue. Because Shakti Shiri, Shachi Shri was one of the greatest Mahasandhi practitioners. No prayers, none, you know, just totally. But let's not go into that for now. <clears throat> this is not, an, not a license to be lazy, you understand? This is the supreme most diligent, diligence. Anyway, enough of this. I'm going to now do the... What is it? Um, the transmission of. Now, I heard that this is live stream. I have been, I have, I've been pondering about this. Are they going to receive this transmission? Um, I think so. I have few reasons for this. Because sometimes, even when we receive transmission from the lamas in places like Nepal and India, many times lama is sitting on the throne and you are sitting way out there, you understand? And you only hear through mic and it's still considered, you know, receiving the transmission. Since this is happening now, live situation, I guess, you can consider this as a, uh, that you have received the uh, transmission. So, <clears throat> so first, um, Namal Lama Deshi Devi ko kancha sum jaran jaran dadan lebe sum chachu kadi chachi Namal Lama Deshi Devi ko kancha sum jaran jaran dadan lebe sum. Chancho by the Jazuji Namalama de Jedivu, which is some Jiranjan Tapandra, Chancho by the Jazuji Namalama de Jedivu, which is some Jiranjan. That under the same Jana Janju by the Jazuji, same Jedo work in the Lama Sanjay to me. Draw, draw, same Jedo in the Lama Sanjay. 
There's a refuge and there's the bodhicitta and followed by the seven branch um, prayers um, accumulating merit, merit through prostrations, confession, making offerings, rejoicing, asking the Buddhas to turn the wheel of the Dharma and asking the Buddhas to uh, remain in the samsara to enlighten sentient beings. And after that, Tenche is basically visualizing the Guru Rinpoche. So, Dunji Namgaringi Long, Sentry Pemanji did the Kusum Java did the Savi Lam Pemanjung, Karman Dan, then she did the Pesha Sampi Chuvan, so Pemanji. Chai to Chitant, Embibendus, to Moyen, Dodge Chitant, Kusum to Chitant, Tasum Chusum Ramjan, Twenty Sijin Lamang, Ungan Sumichin to Sugar Chur. As the last stanza indicates, the color, the shape, the attributes are really not that important. Just the mere confidence that Guru Rinpoche is in front of you. Um, if you want to elaborate his look and his gesture and his outfit, you can, according to your wish. For the tendril or for auspicious reason, it would be good if you can visualize them, visualize the Guru Rinpoche majestically, beautiful, um, pleasant, radiant, and um, brilliant. So if you can visualize that. And then, after visualizing this, you chant the supplication. So that's the seven line prayer known for, you know, I mean, the origin of the seven line prayer is again, like we were talking earlier, it's like beyond our ordinary conceptions. I mean, it is actually the sound of the dharmata. It's not composed. It's it's just the, it's a, it's the sound of dharmakaya, sambhogakaya, nirmanakaya. If you really want an author that wrote this or that said this, you can say it's also um, uh, all the dakinis. The in unis, uh, uh, sort of all the dakinis in instantly together they came up with these prayers so you can understand it that way too and then after that if you want you can also chant om mahum bhanta guru pema siddhi om mahum bhanta guru pema siddhi om mahum bhanta guru pema siddhi hum om mahum bhanta guru pema thetang tal bhanta samaya so there's a two set of Guru Rinpoche mantra. One is more uh, sort of the heart, um, sort of um, sort of the heart mantra or um, the uh, the general man mantra, the longer one is sort of to accomplish or invoke his uh, blessing and uh, his protection and uh, compassion. And then 
Also, if you like, you can add to some sanji guru rinpoche. We do that there are some parche goes to the so on sanji china song but you want some but you to but change it all. This come this one comes as a treasure teaching of the chojo rinpa. And then at the end la min sum do sum le wezir na che ta sum tin pe on ji to ji ji lam ji ko bit tan ni jong tin ye min lon de chu ge jong jal ta at the, at the end, the Guru Rinpoche in front of you, um, I mean, you can elaborate by visualizing light coming from his forehead, throat, heart, and all together, and dissolve through your forehead, throat, heart, dispelling, purifying all your defilements, receiving all the Abhishekas, and at the end, Guru Rinpoche himself dissolves into you, you and Guru Rinpoche become inseparable. In that state, you remain just watching this moment thought, just watching this moment mind. It could be something so mundane and ordinary, such as the humming of the air condition. It could be something interesting. It could be very hideous. Emotions, sad, <coughs> sadness, depressions, joy, excitement, whatever it is, just watching it without any fabrication, no, no attempt to contrive. Just watching, watching, watching. and totally appreciating that this moment naked cognizance is the quintessence of the Guru Brahma Sambhava. At the end, Gyavadi Nyutata Ujjana Madhuja Dravachi Jamadu Desala Kivarsho May this <coughs> merit of supplicating to Guru Rinpoche may all realize the in, innate Guru, the inner Guru Rinpoche, Pramasambhava, that is presiding, that's residing, that's with us at all times, no decreasing, no increasing, no decay, not born, not dwelling, not ceasing. So that's it. That is this set of sadhana is composed by Jamian uh, treasure, sort of taken by Jamian Chenzi Wangpo at the, at the request of Choju Lingpa. I think that's about it. Um, I think uh, we have maybe one or two, a um, uh, few, I think a few minutes for f maybe one or two questions. Are you sure you have questions? What, what kind of questions can you have? Um, actually, there's a question uh, on is actually the second topic of tonight's teaching, which is how do we use our Buddhist faith to benefit people or help others around us? Wow, that is a very big question. <laughs> it, can, it can come in many, many different ways. So many different ways. It can be, it can be even not involving at all, because you are a troublemaker. Why, <laughs> you know, why why should you mess up things? Stay out of, you know, you will help others by you not being there. You understand? That could be the. That could be it also. You understand? Save the world for <laughs> by not being there. You understand? And on that regard, just, you know, do prayers. You know? It, it may sound very selfish, but not necessarily. 
Um, I would like, to, yeah, of course. Then, if you must do something, yes, do. Oh, so many. Um, I don't know. It could be. Um, I'm serious. It could be, you know, like um, giving up uh, some of your old genes to Salvation Army, right? <laughs> Salvation Army. Is it Salvation? What do you call them? Sort of. Uh, what do you call them? These uh, charity shops. Yeah. It could be that. Or it could be go to David Jones and buy a nice shirt for yourself and think that I'm going to boost my confidence. I'm, after all, a Guru Rinpoche follower. Today I'm going to wear a nice shirt and walk around in the street so that I pray that whoever sees me, they will somehow, one way or another, get connected to Guru Rinpoche. That also works. I'm serious. I'm not being cheeky here. And this is, <laughs> this is how it is. The Buddhist way to help is enormous. It's like it should not be sort of limited and narrowed down to a certain way only. Yes, if you have... By all in build but if you think that building a hospital is just going to uh, sort of boost your ego, like uh, Shanta Deva said, if you find a snake falling on your uh, lap, what do you do? You just panic and you, what do you call it? You just, um, you. you I don't know, you run, right? Likewise, in the mid, at the, uh, uh, at the opening ceremony of your hospital that which you built, uh, if, you, if your ego is popping up, run. <laughs> Just like a snake falling on your lap. That's not the, you know, like that. In everything. Be, be a, be a renouncement. Go to a cave, you know. Give up everything. Give up your, everything. And, you know, stay in the mountain or cave. Meditate. If that's going, yeah, that could help sentient beings. But, if there is a chance to benefit sentient beings by becoming the, Prime Minister of Australia, never say no. Never, one should say. And this is serious. Because I know there's so many of my own friends here, I can see some hippies. <laughs> These hippies, they think that, oh, you know, like being a politician and being a, what do you call it, a CEO of a bank is a such a, is a such a, what do you call it, materialistic thing to do. We don't know. Because being a hippie can be very materialistic. They are so attached to their um, grass-made soap. <laughs> they are so attached. And they are so attached to some of my hippie friends are the most right-wing people. Of, you know, like they are so conservative. They have a certain values. You are not supposed to be stuck with any of one value. And so you should be ready. You should be really... If it is benefiting sentient beings. But then, of course, you know, a young bodhisattva, young practitioner, don't even know what is going to benefit sentient beings. You know, we don't actually know what will actually benefit. Because, I mean, of course, I can always give you this, and you can all consider me as, oh, very generous that you are, I'm giving you, what's this, berry, black, black, yeah, blackberry. But who knows, this could lead you to problems too, right? So, what do we do? Jambal pao, chitar chambata, kundur sambhuti, tejin te teda, kunji chisuta, you know, this is what the, there is even a prayer that's saying, well, actually I like to do prayers. 
for the benefit of sentient beings. But I actually don't know what will benefit them. So, whatever this guy called Manjushiri or Avalokiteshvara, they are praying, I am praying that their prayer will work. This is probably a good one. This is probably a good one. Because they know what, what, what is necessary and when is necessary. Right time, right place, right situation. We don't know. We really don't know. Okay? Thank you, Maybe two more questions and then we will wrap. You mean the composition, Guru, Guru, uh, yeah, Surya Rashmi. There is actually the whole sadhana. Um, in fact, um, about a year ago, Indians, bunch of Indians came to me. Yeah, this is another thing, Indians. <laughs> they said they are really like you, Guru Rinpoche. No. Really? Because, you know, Indians, they have a history of Nagarjuna and all that, but in a very small, almost non-existence of the Guru Rinpoche account in the Indian history of Dharma and all that. But anyway, these guys too. And by the way, it's really interesting. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but yeah, the bunch of Indians. Um, some, yeah, some of them were strong Hindu, what do you call it? Really sort of Hindu right wing. Yeah. And this, the, the others were really, really strong Muslims. Anyway, they all came to me and said, they are they like Guru Rinpoche. They want to build a statue of Guru Rinpoche. <laughs> they want to build something exactly like one in Bhutan. Then I thought, look, I can, I appreciate your sort of, you know, excitement. But let me give you a, a different idea. I said, why don't you build Guru Rinpoche, but not the one that Bhutanese and Tibetans are building. Why don't you build uh, Guru Surya Rashmi? Because he actually looks a bit like a Shiva. Because they, you know, they're going to build very big, and the local people will find the, uh, the Tibetan version of Guru Rinpoche a bit strange, you know, with a hat and the, you know. So now they built Guru uh, Surya Rashmi, who is sort of with a tiger skin skirt, half naked, just like um, Shiva. So I think the local people also, they can relate. Uh, it's in Pune, it's near Pune. And I think um, actually, yeah, Guru Surya Rashmi. Um, each of the Guru Rinpoche, Guru Rinpoche manifestation has its own sort of unique, essential path. Guru Surya Rashmi, among many, Guru Surya Rashmi is something to do with the authentic presence. Because according to the Guru Rinpoche Tantra, we lack authentic presence. We are just not authentic. There's always a bit of a mending here and there, you understand? So the authentic presence, to, in, to have too much critical thinking, not trust, you understand? So, probably a good thing to do. I was sort of also in the mind of promoting Guru uh, um, Surya Rashmi because, you know, you go to places like Bhutan, Guru Dorje Tole, this sort of the wild Guru which is everywhere. Um, so I thought maybe it's time to sort of make people know Guru, uh, the other Guru Rinpoche. Probably Australians might like Guru Peman Jungne. Just came in my mind because Guru Peman Jungne is always sort of, um, what do you call it, scantily clad, you know, sort of, always very naked. 
Yeah. Mm. I have a feeling the Guru, you know, Australians might prefer this one. Guru Pema Juni, the, lot, uh, the blue one, um, the lotus born, actually the Guru lotus born, is a blue one, naked. And uh, completely, uh, it, the, ah, yes, that's why the Australians, the, the sort of the essence of this Guru Pema Juni is how to be at ease. At ease? You know, the Australians, they like this, no? At ease, at ease. But how to really be at ease? That's what the Australians would like it. Okay, one more, and then, okay. Is there a melody or music that, that is good for the seven-line prayer? Or that, is there an internal teaching that is about the music of the seven-line prayer? So many, and you should create one, since you are a musician yourself. Why don't you create one? And then there's actually a group of choir in New York who has even done a choir. Sort of, fine, no problem. You should do it. Whichever. This is what Khandro Yeshe Sogel said. Khandro Yeshe Sogel said, go up to the mountain. Look towards the um, how it is? southwest. Look towards, face towards southwest. Just, just, what do you call it? sort of scream and shout and, you know, like just express your longing to Guru Rinpoche, however you like, whichever way it moves you. And it makes you so, so naked. Because you see, at the end, what we really want is to really experience the nakedness of the mind. Okay, I think that's it. I'm sorry, uh, I've been moving a lot in Australia this time. You know, like, you know, like, um, I never realized Australia is this big. <laughs> Five hours of flying here, there, here, there. So I'm not that fresh. Uh, I'm, I'm not really thinking fresh. Uh, so um, I'm, I may have said a lot of uh, not so cohesive things. I'm sorry. Um, but... Uh, uh, basically, those who have, in, uh, you know, connection to Guru Rinpoche, yes, it's easier than blinking your eyes. Don't think that enlightenment is difficult to achieve. Just think of Guru Consider job done. <laughs> I'm not saying this. This is... People like Geshe Sogel, they say this, and I think we should trust her. She is quite a... Actually, many people like Long Chenpa, Jing Meiling, but they say Guru Yap Yum. She is the female version of Guru, Guru Rinpoche. So, but anyway, she said this. Thank you. Okay, uh, don't think yet we are not finished. We need another 10 minutes of Rinpoche's time, please grant us, and today we want to show our gr appreciation and gratitude to Rinpoche for being here. And even though you said that you are just sharing and you're tired and all, but we benefited so much. Yes. So thank you, Rinpoche.